What you'll learn about me over the next little while is that for the benefit of the doubt, I usually give a lot of things like a fair, decent chance. A lot of time is usually I find things that are panned or not so great. I usually would find the good in things and a lot of time I enjoy a lot of stuff. And today is quite the exception. I've shown many forms of things in the past where I've seen so many different entertainment projects and media that either may not be that great or could have flaws that affect it but a lot of time I go into something to find the good in things and you'll see what another review I have coming up which is going to be like that as well. But as I mentioned there is exceptions and some things are so that I actually get so annoyed by it and regret sitting through where even if there is these smalls of things I like in it it's very minimal. This is a case that like it just becomes about everything else that I don't like. And the basis on this review is that I've been holding off on doing this one for for a year give or take because i just couldn't find the energy to do it but now today in sort of a lengthy form of review i'm going to talk about probably one of the most insulting and worst shows of last year and this is of course with the animated series of film <laughs> I know there's, there's probably other worse ones last year, like Queen Cleopatra or that one, The Idol, whatever it's called, but I didn't watch or know too much of them to really care. Now, I've been meaning to do this, as I mentioned, for the last year or so, but just have the energy to do so, and just, I felt if I left it too much longer, it's going to annoy me, so I might as well just get through with it and just take on now. It's basically hard to say what hasn't already been said about this series from the hundreds of videos that Kit released on the series from its two episode premiere or even to the basis of the original teaser trailer back three months before the series began. And I can sense that the internet may be in for something that will cause some major issues. So today I'm going to delve into a little different approach to this series where instead of separating it to my usual review format I've done for films and in most cases I'll probably do with game reviews, I'm going to be delving this more into episode by episode near the end of it but I'm going to still do the review format. I'm going to start with like a back background, then I'll do story, characters, presentation, writing, and then go into the episodes. And just, let's just see how this turns out, and you can see why probably as best I can explain why I think this show is really bad. It all began on the day of my actual birth! So for those that are unaware, this series is a planned spin-off of the popular and beloved Hanna-Barbera Warner Bros. cartoon of Scooby-Doo that was based on a group of older preteens and their talking dog who go around the fictional town of Coolsville solving mysteries and find the truth of some supernatural goings on that may just be someone in a mask. Now, this series has become quite an iconic character in pop culture since their inception in the 1960s, and I've seen a multitude of different reboots and updates to keep it relevant from classics like, you know, Zombie Island, a film that is quite dark for a Scooby-Doo cartoon, ones about alien invaders, there's the one with the witch's ghost that had a girl band that probably caused a lot of a sexual awakening for many young people. And even the likes of with crossovers with Casper and the Ghoul School of 13 Ghosts. This, this series like the original Where Are You, a few series of the most divisive character in the series that may have changed since then with Scooby's cousin Scrappy-Doo. What's new Scooby-Doo that still has probably the best remix of the theme song. Let's play a bit right there, you know. And, of course, even some instances with probably a lot of people say the best update with Mystery Incorporated. It also spawned a few forays into live action, including two films from the early 2000s that in some ways were written and produced by the man that gave us the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy, and also provide the best version of Shaggy in the form of Matthew Lillard. Praise be to you, Matthew Lillard, you helped bring that character to life. But what is to say about this new version? Well, this idea was initially conceived about five years ago by the creators of the series of actress Mindy Kaling and Charles Grant. Now, Kaling, Kaling may be known for her performance and writing on the US office as Kelly Kapoor and for shows like The Mindy Project and The Sex Lives of College Girls, as well as being a lot of her projects being self-inserts of herself, a point that I will bring up later, possibly, in this update. And Grande is known as a writer and producer for shows like The Office as well, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, and SNL. Now these two decided to focus on the character of Velma as in more recent years she has become a lot more of a fan favourite and that Kayling herself always related to the character in her youth. You'll start to see this point now later on. Now at this point some were against it from the get go but I gave the benefit of the doubt at that point. Once more starts coming along it started to get more and more concerning and more turned against it when some of this came from the first look image showing what Velma looks like which she was kind of race swapped she was more South Asian I think kind of thing but this all 
However, some of it came from the first look image shown by Velma looks like, and some were the characters, but I felt it really got more concerning when they dropped the first official teaser at New York Comic Con, which I'll show a brief bit here. There is one thing the internet agrees on, it's that you should never change anything ever. I hope you die. Sincerely, Velma. Well, at least Judy's still white. You see, the issues that sprung up was that they bring up to the point about the changing of what made the appealing aspect of the original so annoying, and then point out the criticisms with the added benefit of brand placement of the streamer that this was series going to be on, with... At that around that point, the company in particular, two or three months beforehand, was criticized for cancelling finished films and shelving so much animated content on their streamer. A sentiment that really hasn't changed the company and is currently in the midst of where there's a huge hashtag going for a certain film. Now, the likes of this were just the worry that this was going to be the same element of the series, or maybe it was just a small factor and the marketing wasn't going to really help save it. But we had to, didn't have to wait too much longer as the series was dropping in mid January, I believe it was the 12th of January in the US. And they didn't even release a full trailer for it until within the last 24 hours before the series released, so there was concerns made much worse by that point once the trailer dropped and the concerns got amplified to it. But I could continue with that trailer, but I've delved enough into this brief backstory for the series, so let's get to talking about this mess then. Let's just get on to it. And it starts with a murder, bitch. Now, on the basis on this is that I'm going to split this into the base of a few aspects where I'm going to based on the outline the story concept first, then give it a score, and then give the delving into the episode in a separate section. So, in most of their Scooby-Doo series, they tend to be seeing the gang going off on their mystery machine to a spooky or non-threatening looking location and solve a mystery that caused by a spooky specter and solve the mystery in some way. However, this is a little bit more of a different, different perspective, and is a bit like the plot of Mystery Begins, but not as structured but I'll get to that. Anyways, here's the basic rundown of what the plot was. So the series will be told from the perspective of Velma and how she was the one that formed the Mystery Inc and how they came together while she comes to terms with figuring out the mystery of her mom's disappearance and a possible serial killer murdering teens around the town. Now, the basis on this plot does not sound too bad at first glance, where mainly of it being an origin and then giving some of the characters a bit more of a backstory. But the way that it is presented just becomes very convoluted where one episode is the focus on like you know the disappearance and the serial killer and then the next it's rarely mentioned and then starts to be totally all over the place in terms of personal stuff my mom is gone and probably dead fred got small wee wee etc to someone is going around murdering people and we need to find out who that appoints you question why am i watching this why was this made and chosen over better options we lost a a sequel to that scoop movie from 2020 and we also lost another animated Scooby-Doo movie that had the Hex Girls from the Witch's Ghost in it. You know, the one I mentioned about the sexual awakening for a lot of people for. That was what we lost for this. And I do not hate the concept of how they try to tell a story, for sure. Like, I think the outline of the story seems like a reasonable thing to work on as a basis, you know. We in the past we rarely delved into likes of the characters' backstories of like their you know their parents or anything like that, like you know, their kind of thing. Cause I think most we had was Mystery Incorporated with Fred and his and his father, which they kind of tinge on a bit here, but I'll get to that. And I just I feel it could have been more of a focus on one or the other, or just written better to basically structure more, but I'm gonna delve into my talking episodes. But overall, I think it's not the worst thing ever, but it could have been fleshed out better. So if I'm gonna give a score to the story i'm giving it between a four and a five i think that's probably the it's probably the okayest thing about this series but you'll see is it called rudeness it is you're like smart so this series has a lot of characters that i could go through in the series from this some of the townsfolk to Velma's dad and the parents of all the other cast members but for the sake of purpose i'm only keeping it to the main cast because they're more of the focal points for this entire 10 episode series and it's the point of just some of them are kind of a spoiler, some is a major one's a major dick and the other just feels put in for no sense to build to it and one that just helps drive the plot in one or two episodes but that's really it and in the case i do not have much to say on the other ones and rather focus on these characters in general so before i delve into it i want to bring up the first question that many of you are probably asking but where is scooby well he's not in this series at all and it's the only form of a scooby-doo project or series that does not have the actual character in it um well besides unless the likes of weird porn parodies of Scooby-Doo exist, you know, like those triple X ones. I feel logically anything that hasn't 
an IP a franchise made, there's definitely some adult film version of it. And if there is, I really question if there's some weird bestiality shit with this stuff, but I doubt there is. I just think, supposedly, that it was the only reason they could have made this series that they could not use Scooby-Doo. So I guess that was the point. I guess that's what essentially happened. But what's the point of a more adult-based Scooby-Doo exists in general if it doesn't have the character? You can do an adult Scooby-Doo cartoon and stuff, which already exists in the books in the comics and Mystery Incorporated, which is more of an adult series than this. So it's already not off to a great start, but let's just get into talking about the characters. All right, let's just get her out of the way. For a show based on this character, Velma has to be the most disliked character in the entire show universe and just in general, as there's nothing really that likable about her character at all. Her entire character is made up of making references to other properties, mocking others, saying to most current phrases that feel like that they might have been relevant and will most case be outdated within the next few years or even by the release of the series, uh, belittle the audience, belittle everyone in the show, kind of just in general, of her being a character we have to focus on for the series that's like, you know, the unreliable narrator kind of thing in this series. I was just like questioning, why was this a point when this our character is annoying? It doesn't help that this character is just like most of the shows that Mindy Kane has created which is just a stand-in for her character in the form that she wants everyone to love her, has a prejudice against certain ethnicities, makes it all the focus on her, etc, etc. It's basically, if you look at any show, it is like that. And she's known to do this in every show. People know a lot more to other characters. And I think when this show came out, people started to look into it more. What is the case with the other leads where there's some change that makes them a bit better or tolerable or worse? Velma is like this throughout the entire series and just doesn't change. It just makes it harder to sift through sometimes with questioning why do we have to follow a series like as a main focal character that's such a spiteful and hateful personality. So now we move on to the character with the most noticeable changes and this is to do with the show's version of Shaggy who's not called Shaggy but in reality we're going by his actual name from the from in general and that is Norville. Now this one has had the race swap and in most cases lost a lot of the appeal of what made Shaggy a very popular character. Not saying that like a race swap is a bad thing, I don't mind that at all, I'm perfectly fine with some changes and stuff like that, but it lost the personality of what made appealing to Shaggy, where he's not that stoner looking character with the shaggy hair and insatiable appetite, where he's now a straight edge kid who does not like drugs and he will bring it up multiple times throughout the series, reviews different snacks and live streams, has some appeal with swords and for whatever becomes majorly clear from the first mention and appearance of him and even to the point of it being pointed out to him that he is a um look you're a simp i'm gonna have to report you back to guska Yes, he is clearly evident Norval is a massive simp for Velma, but she does not feel the same for him, but we'll talk on that later. And it's a case that she shoots him down or just uses him to bounce off her issues and problems from him without any word in on it. A point in which I want to talk about later that I mentioned in a previous review about how they tackle this certain issue and do it worse than this. After a point, I was not annoyed at the start, but it got more and more annoying that may have changed and there was a sense that possibly might have proved it by the end, but then it just within the last episode they change it, so it just as if like it never happened, so I I guess it was bound to happen in a show like this. Now we talk about a character that I feel like at least from the outcome of this messy ass show, by the end of it, is actually one that did not overly annoy me the most. I actually feel like there was some sense of decent appellment, and that was with Daphne. Now like the other two, she has also received a bit of a slight change in the form of a race swap where she is East Asian American in this series, and while they gave her the trait of the mean girl in certain elements, she is still tied into this with the likes of the relationship she'll have a bit with Velma, as we've seen that everyone is in love with Velma and the mystery ink, which brings the mystery as to why. She she lives with her two cop moms who are, they're fine, not much of a major impact. She has her own ordeal of wanting to know about her own parents, and she's adopted by the two cops, but we'll get into that in the episodes. She seems to be more different to the version from the original, where she's always most cases the damsel in distress always gets captured, and in some degree at least, it's not insufferable for the most part. And while there is point about it that could be annoying, it's not as bad as the others. And lastly, we have Fred. Oh boy, what did they do to Fred? Now he's the only character that got the least amount of change, where he looked exactly the same as his version from the original cartoon. But the whole thing that make out that he is the brainless idiot that is also a late bloomer. He acts like a child that can't do basic things and most of the time becomes the butt of jokes about how Fred has a small manhood. This bring up quite a bit in the first few episodes. 
And the fact that they just got Glenn Howerton or, you know, Dennis Reynolds from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia to voice him just feels such wasted potential. As he's quite a funny actor and, like, in Always Sunny, he's actually quite funny a lot of the time. They really give him nothing to do except acting competent, although they give him a bit of the unhinged nature, so there's that kind of thing. Which is also feels weird that his dad is voiced by Frank Welker or the original voice actor for Fred for the entire series, so it just feels odd to have him there but not voice the main character. But I guess they have to change him, everyone. They didn't try to reach a point around the middle of the season that they suddenly make him a feminist that feels really forced and also leads to some falling for Velma like everyone, when I read a certain book that I will delve into later in the episode breakdowns. A breakdown of the episode and a breakdown of my life because I've been on the daily because, dear God. And it's clearly a far cry from the version that is presented in the original series that they try to take elements from, mainly issues with the father and some incorporated, possibly. But I guess that's what happens when they want to make the focal series of the female character who is in this one no one really likes at all. So overall the characters either have been bastardized, start off as a tolerable but get annoying, don't appeal from the beginning to, or end in like the likes of the ones that actually turn out okay of the main group, but one of four is not really a strong ideal at all when they could have delved into making these characters more likable and fleshing them out instead of dumbing them down, flanderizing them, or making them disliked but have no idea who agreed to the ideas. So the character score in this one I'm giving a tree. This, I'm just, it's just basically a round up to a tree. Right, I'm making this section brief, but I'm saying one thing that I kind of like is the animation, but that's not really much of a massive praise, as, you know, I like a lot of animation. The visuals are clean and decent. It's not to a massive level of detail like some other shows. It seems like a good effort on that part, but it's very basic. It does have some good moments of interesting visuals when Velma has her episodes, so to say, whenever she tries to solve mysteries, but we'll get to that as well and what they represent later. And usually in those scenes, they have some interesting imagery, but it becomes few and far between to the point where the same elements are used multiple times. That can use its flair, but in all honesty, it helped it a little bit. That was some normal visuals in this I question. Who the fuck signed off on this? As for characters. I guess they kind of distinguish that Fred and Daphne look close to their original counterparts and Velma's close and same a bit with Norval, though most people would probably get confused if they had no idea that this was supposed to be the same character from the other shows. It just becomes confusing given that his dad in the show has the exact same design as Shaggy in the original which just convolutes things. There was initially early concepts that I think they had Norval having a similar hairstyle to Shaggy in the original cartoons, I believe, but they changed it somewhere in between. So I don't know where, but it probably just happened. But you know, I've seen that kind of aspects, and I believe it. it's fine keeping the designs anyway, but I feel in instance, if you change it slightly, you're going to get a bit confuzzled, but that's what I say. And as for the source material respect, ugh, it's a far stretch to the point that they will mock it a lot of the time in the show as being dumb, really not care about it, or just make it a bit of a mess to the point that I wonder if this series started as a different mystery series and then just change it to a Scooby-Doo spin-off, but I have no idea. Once again, they want to make it a more mature adult version, but it was proven already in the much better Mystery Incorporated series, which when this was trying to be more like Riverdale, a series that had potential but went on way too long and probably very quickly gets over tedious, overrated, and wish they wanted to respect. And they also mentioned they want to respect it, but they should have done so. Not kind of mock it in certain aspects. They're thinking like they're trying to be they're trying to be meta kind of thing, all like, oh, this was in the other show. That it starts to feel a bit like it's a family guy cutaway gag. Which just feels weird. It's like I'm I'm expecting one point it's like Peter, I remember that time to just suddenly pop up around nowhere, but I guess this is what happens, but if they wanted to respect it, they should have just done so and not just mock it. Sure, you can have one or two things that are questionable, but like everything else is just like it's not really questionable. It's just the standard stuff. So it may have just been a case just to leave it alone, but I guess they wanted something to mock. So in general, if I'm getting presentation, I'm giving it four. I think just in case the animation is fine, like it's just very generic. Keeping it close to car designs is fine, but maybe a little bit of change might have helped it a bit, but I don't know. Who wrote this lie?
All right, this one is this one is easily enough to talk about. The writing in this is bad. It's really stretching into that. It's all over the place. It's full of aspects. It really does not know where it wants to go. And it's just not that funny. As I mentioned, the basis about how the show can be very convoluted, where one minute of it is majorly focusing on a serial killer and Velma finding her mom. To make it out like it does not matter and just focus on relationships, character finalization, and in some sense try to be hip with the kids. It's like a how you do fellow kids kind of thing. And just makes things really messy. A part of me feels like it was trying to appeal to a lot of people and mock or annoy others, but seems to have missed on both when it seems to have collectively been annoying to every to a lot of people who watched it. In the case of Finn, that these characters do not feel like the versions we would normally see in the past multiple films, shows, spin-off specials that we've seen over the course of the last 60, 70 years. The last 60 years. That I feel in the case if they gave it a bit more time, made a bit more structure, not putting in countless references to other properties to have the feeling of like a family guy cutaway game or just a barrage of just jabs and insults that Velma throws out to everyone when the attention is not on her. It's just the case of this writing needed a little bit more of a better structure and actually decent writing and not just feel it forced with all the directions it goes in and as well as the attempts of comedy that couldn't really see and in most cases could be way better than the got a shot outcome and end up feeling like. So scoring this in the writing department, it's either a two and a half or a three. That's what I'm getting on this. Oh, we actually doing this? All right, here we go. Episode one, let's do this. All right, now, usually when it comes to most of the reviews, I'd finish it there. But as I mentioned, I'm going to be delving into the actual thing with a TV show. If it's a case where I do a weekly review thing, which I probably will do in the future, I will probably just do a focus on the episode and leave it there. I might do an overall story where I just do the first half for like a series in general i'd name my favorite episode my least favorite episode and be done with it but because this was took a year long i decided to just talk about the whole thing in one point i'll do another show i have been working on as it is but i'm gonna try and not delve too much on them besides maybe the first and last ones unless there's a certain episode i want to just like complain about but in most cases i remember them enough that i'm not in the mood for looking up again to or watch them which i believe this series never released over here in the us so i just watch online just kind of thing i i, I might have i just could and care and best give some of the pinpoint moments to discuss so let's just get into it and we'll start with episode one all right so episode one starts with a self-introduction by the main lead and the basis of being self-aware of it it's about men and how they deal with being given even more power and if it's with women that they question what drove her to go crazy which i'm pretty sure is not really how most of these origins go but this is the writing of Thelma, so we're off to a really kind of questionable start it then cuts to the school in a locker room where a woman that turns out to be daft Daphne, that we'll learn in a few minutes, is disgusted by two roaches just getting jiggy right in front of her in the middle of the hallway, in the middle of the locker room, and I was like, oh, we've already, we've already had the first sex joke, and it's not even two minutes in. We then cut to a group of girls, who I may remind you in this series now supposedly are 15 to 16, so it's a bit questionable. Now, thankfully, nothing is shown, and I feel it's case, it's teetering on big mouth situation where that, that I feel like he could put you on a register. In this, but basically, they're in a shower and again make an attempt at a fourth wall exploration about how most TV pilots have a lot of more sex and nudity than most other episodes of a season. That just feels weird of them mentioning that this is when they're underage in the series. Though at least, you know, it's kind of trying to be, oh, we're trying to be, you know, meta kind of thing. We're like, we're basically being self-aware and it's like thinking pick a lane either just be self-aware for self-aware's sake or just focus on the show that's all i'm getting there's some rows a hooded figure attacks her makes a mention about race choice casting and then the figures revealed to be velma soon after she finds a body in her locker that's lobotomized and is accused of the killing makes sense she's in a dark in a full dark hoodie brandishing a blunt weapon i believe with a pipe or something i can't recall attacks velma anyway she's then taken to the police we meet daphne's dubbed mom gives her about 24 hours to find out who really caused it and then she lets it and then she's let go outside the precinct she meets fred and she makes some cult he makes some cultural racism joke daphne shows up tries to get advances on fred in public in a sexual manner literally grabs for his junk and his finger and says you're really gonna get really gonna get jiggy right in front of the police station but yeah so then we jump forward and we meet Velma's dad and her new stepmom, who we got pregnant shortly after her mom just went missing. That leads to a weird, creepy nude photo shoot and um, disgusting imagery where the baby is literally stretching itself like its face and its it hands out of the out of the mom's stomach, and it's really kind of unsettling. So then Velma goes get a job at the the diner that her mom, their stepmom, works at, where they're holding a funeral for the murdered girl to a slow funeral version of my 
Ipone, I think it's called, or as I like to mention it, the Magic Mike song. As she goes outside, finds Fred who's having parental issues, and then Velma tells the story of her mom and how she is. Episodes. Essentially, she has an anxiety attack, and we'll get to that in a minute, when she tries to solve a mystery after her mom went missing, believing she caused her disappearance. Soon, of course, we then meet Norval, who keeps saying stuff about leaving her VMs or voicemails, and then she leaves, has another panic attack, shows a weird way to stop it, and then the father explains that the most the mom hated to hear and left, and it seems to believe that, which makes me question, isn't Velma supposed to be smart? She wouldn't be she wouldn't just believe this kind of situation. She does suddenly a glow up that lasts about a minute, Fred does a speech, and then has a possible hunch that her mom's last sighting was near Fred's house. So Velma Norville and Norville go to investigate. All right, let me get to my point now I mentioned in my Puss and Poots 2 review, which you can find like an actual good shit down below in the description. But Essentially, this show has a terrible form of showing how to deal or help someone with an anxiety or panic attack, and that is the basis that Velma starts hallucinating and the way she snaps out of it by making Norval tell her her feelings for her. A thing that is not a way to work, it makes things worse in particular, trying to help someone laugh while having a panic attack is not a good thing. I should know as someone who wakes up most of the nights lately having anxiety, really bad anxiety or panic attacks, it doesn't help. It leads to a lot more crying. And it just it's just a really terrible way to resolve it or should resolve it compared to how Puss and Boots 2 did it. And even I think I read somewhere like Gumball and Paw Patrol movie did or something, I think. Anyway, somehow it works. She comes across Fred and learns the truth that he has not gone free puberty, and it looks like he's about to silence her with the, with her death, but is shot in both legs, revealed it was to pay her off to keep her quiet about his secret. Now his secret in particular is he's a late bloomer. He hasn't gone through puberty, and supposedly he has a tiny penis. A mention we'll get a lot more in the second episode. So after Velma returns home and finds her body in her trash can and the episode ends, it essentially leads to, oh, there's, there's another dead body. Okay, next episode. So besides the fourth wall self-aware humor and tell her way to deal with a panic attack, a staple that I experienced in the daily lately, I've mentioned, the series is not off to a good start, and it could have massive room for improvement, but I guess we'll just see how it turns out. So, the first episode I'm giving a tree. What do you mean we're doing the entire season? Okay, so according to most ratings board listings, this is ranked as probably the lowest scoring episode of the series, which I'm already guessing people stopped watching after this one, or just, is just bad, but I can understand that this does not have much of an improvement. So, in this episode starts with the police taking the body and realizing there was a killer on the loose, with their suspected one being Fred being taken away, before getting a small member to expose the public, which technically could have most people on the register for doing for seeing him, and I believe they took photos, I don't, I can't recall. And Velma's dad's taking the case for Fred to prove his innocence. Now, I think it was either episode 1 or this episode has a terrible joke as well about Daphne and her clique confronting Velma in the bathroom and they make this really long and terrible joke of trying to say well 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 while at toilet and our nearby stool keeps flushing which I forgot to say the jokes as well, as I mentioned, it's not funny. Anyway, Velma and Norville return to school and make some terrible drug joke on 420 about it being a dulcet to watch cartoons, which is the one joke everyone pinpoints from the trailer. She goes to Daphne and asks for a file on her mom, but will only give it to her for about $500. In the process, discovers that Daphne is the school's drug dealer of the Candy Man, or in this case, Candy Woman, and swindles away into helping her to get the file from Daphne. While this is happening, Velma's dad is trying to get Fred proven innocent and discovered that he is too much of a childish person that can't cut a steak or wash himself without help, so he uses that to help, which leads to him in a childlike sailor's alpha, or like a, a schoolboy's alpha kind of thing. That soon leads to a joke where rain falls and he basically makes a particular salute and stands that looks like a certain dictator. Meanwhile, Norville is trying to help get the $500 for Velma and decides to sell his sword for he has for the amount of the fruit, and then uses it to coerce uh, her into dating him for the money, showing a bad way of manipulation and a form of the clear signs of Norville simping for Velma. He goes to sell it, does not get, the, get much for it, and instead goes to sell his kidney for the money and leads to him stopping a wanted criminal accidentally. Now back to the other story, Velma tries selling drugs, does not work, Daphne fires her, then suddenly have a moment they get chased by Daphne's adopted mom's near Escape. Velma learns about the case. Daphne's trying to find out who her own actual parents are as well, and they can somewhat relate. Shuri sells her dad drugs and then promises to give the $500 to be proved to innocence, which does not go well, and for the power of mockery and using a copy of Grey's Anatomy, I believe, gets him put in jail, so it does not go well. At the end of the episode, Velma has another panic attack and Daphne kisses her to stop it, which I do not believe is a good thing to do at all either. Now, I think it's some levels of stress and anxiety with like a, like, kissing or some forms of affection like hugs and stuff do help it helps like release certain endorphins like kind of more calming or happy endorphins but i don't know about the case of a panic attack helping with a kiss 
It's just an instance that this is another thing I have no idea if they know the aspect of it. And essentially from there, that's where the episode ends with them kissing. Now most of the problems with this one is elements from the first, and then just the messiness of the multiple stories at once that go nowhere, that kind of is hinted at the beginning with just the, the, the murder plot. It's kind of vaguely mentioned the Fred plot, and then that's really it. So it just makes a headache to sit through. So if I'm giving it a score, it's probably going to be about two and a half to trade as well. So that's my case. I didn't pay for this. Right. Most case, this episode focuses on these things that for a few of things, I'm going to go through them quick because a lot of time they kind of, you know, just mush together at once. So in the third episode, Velma is questioning her sexuality for a good chunk of the beginning and then the school makes all the girls take a self-defense course and the men get nothing because the school board has no money. Sounds like modern day with, you know, governments. And basically they're taught self-defense to go up against one in a tournament where they will learn life lessons, health, self-defense and truly find themselves. And also this gun. That's basically the top prize is a gun. And this gives a very disturbing image you'll, you've seen already, which this is where the episode comes from. She to Daphne and Velma in the final. Velma reads insecurities of Daphne from her diary. She's left in the bathroom and then gets hated by everyone and Daphne knocks her out and kicks her right into a wall. As for Norval, he is at first goes to the prison with Velma to talk to Fred about the last location of her mom. She gets kicked out for having another panic attack and assaulting a guard. So Norval is basically left on his own to go back to talk to Fred. It fails at first because he doesn't have the charisma. His dad gives him his counselor's jack to help him basically get more into it. He goes back to prison, tries it again, and it works and he gets some information about, you know, Velma's bomb and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, he promised to return for a group therapy session. He fails to do so. It causes Rye for some to escape and then Norval learns of a clue about someone from her family that may help in the overall case, and that's about as much as I can remember from episode 3. A majority episode where not trying to make jokes or push it to be relevant is really boring, and most I can remember of the episode, and it's a case for a few of them. So this one, 3, 3.5 out of 5. Out of 10. Who the hell made this show? So episode 4 brings the basis that starts with, you guessed it, another murder! And then the town going uh, full of old men saying that the reason that they are being targets is because all the women are not are hot and the ugly people are basically safe. It then leads to Velma making a statement about some sexist morals and ends up with her trying to make a list and uh, being tasked with making a list of the 5 hottest girls to be protected by the government from the serial killer. She finds it difficult she hates everyone, well besides Daphne of course, and decides to get the help from a recently exonerated Fred because he would know better and because he's been exonerated because he couldn't have caused the murders because he was in prison. So then Fred, Felma then gives Fred a book known as The Feminine Mystique, an actual book released back in the early 60s that was about the strong movement of feminism, I believe, which Fred initially thinks is a book about Jennifer Lawrence or Mystique from X-Men, or both, which she then reads and sees women's inner beauty inside and out too, which leads to Fred becoming a feminist and then falling for Velma by the end of the episode. So basically Velma then makes the five hosts more ugly or normal but it does not last. She makes herself something. I don't know what this is. Her stepmom goes into labor and then using the hot girls to clear a path for her to get her to the hospital. As in her side with Norval helping Daphne with finding some possible clues towards the location of her real parents by the town's history of crystals. And that's all I can remember episode 4. Sure, it has some annoying jokes, unlike the last episode was a fair bit boring and tries to make the message that kind of sticks around. But this is a push passable. I, I didn't fully hate this one. It's like, there's some decent messenger but it's kind of of course model with everything else but scoring wise and giving us like between 4 to 4.5 please stop i'll do anything so this episode comes to the effect that the planned school band sleepover gets cancelled due to a citywide curfew to stop the deaths of more hot girls and the likes as well is that norval is unavailable as he has now a new girlfriend in the form of a girl named Gigi, who in most cases she's Okay, she's, she's alright. Not much I can really give on this. But the one thing I do remember was that she was labeled as one of the hot girls on the list, but it was also the point that for around the time when this episode was coming out, it was rumored that this was the person that's going to be the stand-in for Scooby-Doo in the show. That was proved to be false, and as in the case, wow, they morphed, they morphed a dog into a black woman, which is... Ah... Uh... It just essentially people got wild with that theory anyway so she has to get fred to help who i also mentioned at this point becomes spin by velma and is now a feminist they go to the library to find clues she has another panic attack but fred has no idea what to do in the situation and he's basically rambling on about the gender pay cut which you know is an important thing to talk about but not in this situation so in the process decides to have the band sleep over at her place to have norval dare to help and then leads to some ordeal of a flute off or will be uncalled out by the characters as being a simp but not in a cryptic way he literally is like saying, you know, boy.
Sip! Sip! Then the whole band group becomes ferals, they have no food, they sneak out to get food from the band. The best scene happens in the entire show where Velma gets hit by a car. Ends up in a police car with Norval's parents are into some weird cosplay kinky shit, I think, and uses the blackmail to get info about Norval's aunt or grandma. She spends a night in jail, the house is put back to normal and clean, and that's when the story ends for the episode. As for the case with Daphne, who's kind of very not used in this episode a lot, she finds her biological parents who are criminals and disguise themselves as Captain Caveman costumes and live in the closed off mines that feel a bit tacked on, but at least had some progression than the actual plot. Overall, another eh episode that could be at most passable. I know it sounds more fine to watch, but trust me, it is much more forgettable show than I checked it, checked out a fair bit. So this one I'm giving around a 4, 4.5 as well. What do you mean we're only halfway through this? Anyway, this episode starts now with episode 6, where it, with Velma talking to Principal Rogers to get information on her mother who was a doctor back in the 60s, where she learns of a system that was assigned by the army to fight their greatest enemy, which wasn't communists, it wasn't the Nazis, it was meddling kids. And this operation was known as the Special Covert Operation Brain Initiative. It leads to probably one of the worst jokes that made me act like this. Scooby? And wait, what did Scooby do? Damn. So she cannot find the answer in the box of having hallucinations as she chokes up to having she chokes up to having parental issues. So mainly with her father, and they spend time, but is used just so he can do work on paternity leave while his new Mrs. Is, ha is taking care of the child. She soon goes to the Jones's house and discovers Miss Rogers' lab under the house where she finally stops her episodes. Her dad finally believes in her and then it ends with her getting a classic sho shock phrase of Jinkies before shoehorned into the episode by a piece of paper. As the arc or story, it ends the arc of Daphne's real parents. They want her to be used as an insurance policy to escape town with a lot of diamonds before they are caught and arrested by her adopted mothers. So it felt just ended so quickly as if the writer were bored with it, with that narrative, but uh. again, another passable one with stories that end abruptly and have little impact a lot, a lot of the time. So scoring wise, 3.5 to 4. What is there left to add to this show that has already been bad? So with episode 7, this one has a focus of a fog dance and seems to be the case that no one cares about the serial killer anymore and that the only way you can, you can go to this dance is if you have a date and suddenly Daphne is not in the mood for the likes of Velma. At this point she discovers a secret number on the piece of paper with jinkies on it and discovers it is a number of the serial killer and wanting to stop Daphne from being killed, decides to cross dress as a man and this episode is just full of really sexist jokes. And, you know, mansplaining stuff is what I can get from this. And it's really rough. I think most people say this is kind of the one of the worser episodes when it has probably the most to do with the killer. Yeah, a lot of these jokes are really bad. Basically, the aspects they got from is the man is so much easier that they have to, all to do is all they have to do is say they are awesome and everyone agrees. I think I'm out of living here because I'm not in the mood for going to check them again, but essentially that's about as much as I can think of what this episode's about. On the other side, Fred is being forced by her by his dad to become Fog King and stop his infatuation with Velma, while also going against Norval and Gigi as Fog King and stuff like that kind of stuff. All that goes nowhere, the four get chased by the killer, they make fun and mock the running through the random doors and for wearing the skies like they would in the old series, making that remember the time joke again. Anyway, the killer disappears, they get his phone, Norval and Gigi make up and Fred is kidnapped by the masked killer, and the episode ends. I guess he tried it with some form of commentary, but it's so below the bar level of humor and jokes that are mocking the other versions of the show is really just unneeded. Again, I bring up the whole wanting to respect the material mentioned from interviews they did before the series air, and just has some elements of this mystery that are at the beginning suddenly become pointless for a good chunk and then pop up again in the last five minutes. It's just one of the kind of worst episodes. So this one I'm giving the score of like a tray. Like the the the, the like the killer stuff seems reasonable. If it was only focused on that sure, but it just bogged down with pointless, like, CW stuff. Uh... Okay, we're near the end of this, and this episode has the most whiplash feeling at the beginning. But not in the form of the great 2014 film with J.K. Simmons, but rather jumps back and forth from earlier to present a bit too much, and too many forms of tangents with multitude of just title cards, like we're doing separate sections of weekly stuff. 
and it makes the episode a bit of a mess. So how does the scribe is they try and get to the killer's phone and eventually figures it out with the most basic passcode and discover a phone photo of the woods. Then look at Daphne to join her by doing this by manipulating and gaslighting her to pretend to have a panic attack to make her go with her. They get there by helping Norval drop them off at his cap until his face found the odds. Unbeknownst to him, because he's a bit of an idiot that Gigi wants to try to drop multiple hints at them, they end up for her normal to get bed jiggy, and that includes alone time in the cabin. This causes a fight, they storm off, and the process fall into a chasm and are trapped by a huge rock on Ford. Now while this is happening, Fred wakes up in some underground bunker and discovers the brains of the three girls in jars, and they can still communicate. And then for some reason, Fred gets turned on by it. Didn't think he would get to the point that he'd be, you know, really up to fucking a brain. Like, a physical brain. I, I, I'm bewildered by this show, honestly. Anyway, eventually they all end up in the same cavern. They rescue the brains and Fred, where Fred leaves the brains for a dead in the cave in. And just as she's falling after rescuing them, jumping a very small gap, she is suddenly rescued by, surprise, surprise, her mom. Yeah, her mom appears just running out of nowhere and saves them all. They escape in a white van that she that looks distinct from her but calls the mystery Jalopy with some weird audio for some reason. They escape and all seems to be over, except they throw in one last curveball because they have two episodes left and they're out of ideas and of course the mom has amnesia what a twist so yeah most of the first half is all over the place of how it presents itself from tell telling things out of order with the flashbacks and it feels like it rushes to a conclusion but at least it's not jumping through multiple hoops with different stories it's all just solely focused just the one there's bit with the fred stuff but at least that still connects to the main story so i'll give it that score wise 3.5 oh wow they threw in this shit for the fun for the finale two episodes so we go straight to the next episode where she is diagnosed with amnesia and the mom has 72 hours to help jog the memory of herself or else they will be gone for good which i'm pretty sure is not an actual thing but i have no idea i don't know anyone that has amnesia so to do this she decides to put up alive all the things in the last two years and likes of how the house looked back then saying the child that her stepmom had with her father is hers with Norval and all that. There's a joke he does where he's like a he's a father abandons the mom and child that just comes out of nowhere that's kind of funny but it's also just kind of just like really just tacked on it's like oh great they're using they're using the stereotypical joke she opens a gift as well as her mom got her that's basically what she finds in the car when she first disappeared that's a pair of shoes and i think they're the ones that only wear in the series something but i have no clue in the process she soon accuses mr rogers of being the killer when he finds the, the welder mask that the killer is known for wearing in his office you get the police the army on him and leads to a wrongful conviction and Norville finally snaps at Velma, an actual positive I say for calling her out because she's a dick. On the other side, Daphne and Fred become outcasts at school for leaving the brains to die and soon work their way back to popularity by acting like they are back together up to their announced coupling at the diner that evening. Which just so happens to bring everyone together where the truth comes out, tensions flare and the killers reveal to be, they do a cliffhanger uh, at the point, go to the credits and then a post credit scene Yes, most of these, epi these episodes have post credit scenes. Reveal that the killer is the mom. Bum, bum, bum. So last two episodes can be a bit of tedium from the MacGuffin of characters amnesia. You do such and such and in a lot of time. And then just the basis of two average mid stories and just leaves the end of the story to wrap up. So score wise, I'm thinking 3.5 to 4. That's really it. So let's just get on to this final episode. Oh, thank God. It's over. So finally, we reach the end of the show, and this one brings the base of the focus with Velma trying to prove her mom's innocence. Tries to get help with Daphne, who does come across an important element in the form of a pocket watch that is discovered to have been used by the real killer to hypnotize Velma's mom and herself into believing her disappearance was her fault. While she's on her own with Fred and Daphne helping with the Jones' company, she suddenly on the f on the fly listens to Norval's voice recordings, who at this point he's basically left Crystal Cove, is going to a fencing school or something it's basically just happens and then just ends abruptly but yeah she listens to Norval's voice recordings and suddenly becomes smitten with him because of course she does like just randomly just throw it in there sure it soon leads to basically her returning to the jones's house giving his own her own voicemail to uh, Norville and then gets to the lair under the under the house she makes the my glasses joke which they kind of point out it's like i hope this isn't a regular occurrence like haha we are funny <laughs> 
but it soon leads to the three of them of Velma, Daphne, and Fred being captured by the real killer, who turns to be Fred's mom. I will say, didn't think of it. Good twist, but whatever. Basically, the whole thing was that she was initially part of the original brain switch program, plans to switch Velma's brain with Fred so that he will have a smart person's brain in his head, which seems to be the case she has not known much about Velma, because I know it's supposed to show she is smart, but this, not so much. However, they escape, they confront her in the caves, Norval shows up just randomly out of nowhere and basically kills her mom, where it ends with Norval in shock of killing someone, puking up, puking up his guts. Daphne in disbelief of what happened, as well as being mad that Velma said someone else's name when they are in love. Fred in disbelief that he's like concerned why his mom is not responding. And in the process of all this, Velma is happy that his, her mom is acquitted. She's covered in blood and just starts twerking. And I question my moral sanity at this point. They are given, they're given the keys to the city, they all fight, and then supposedly they tinge at a possible follow-up with uh, the police chief being murdered in the evidence room of the police station. But I don't care, this series has ended, and I don't care. So, essentially, you know, good twist, villain, it goes by quick enough, the moral seems alright, but... That's pretty much it. I'm just done with it now. So yeah, score on this one is a four. So I think collect collectively it's about a 35 out of 100. I think collectively all together I had in the score. So yeah. But anyway, let's just end this place. Yes, Mr. Frodo. It's over now. So, wrapping it all up in a conclusion, what had an idea of being an interesting series focusing on a now popular fan favorite character of a classic series seemed like a good idea in theory. In execution, it fell apart by trying to make it seem more topical and trendy where it will date it fast, have characters that either been flanderized, turn out okay, and then just question why do we have to follow a main character that is so spiteful and have to follow them for a 10 episode series. Could this have been good? I feel yes. It was a case where it was a form of characters that were already established together as a group that had the tone of mystery incorporated but with a more darker adult tone then I feel it may have worked better to really give more character development to the characters of Fred, Daphne, Shaggy and Velma in that tone where it's not massively changed and you can actually have some interesting development from the writing with some use of humor and even better established relationships and emotions instead of battling, baiting people into it and trying to be trendy when it just doesn't work. I'm sure we will get a proper form of this one day, hopefully, to give them a better chance, you know, at least establishing kind of thing, but that maybe they can actually improve them and not just bastardize them more, but I have a feeling is isn't going to happen. We'll have the people going questioning and going jinkies, jeepers, zoinks, row row, and wondering what the fuck and where did it all go wrong. So the basically tally up the score here so i gave the story around four to five characters a tree presentation a four writing around two and a half to three and collectively episodes i gave around a 3.5 so in total out of a possible 50 is either a 17 or an 18 and a half so between 34 to 37 percent yeah it's that kind of low it's surprisingly higher than dear david but that was just a mess anyway surprisingly but at least not to listen talk about this anymore this what do you mean there's a season two coming But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this very long review of a show that I have been putting off for a year at this point. But I would like to know if you have watched this series, what are your own thoughts on it in general? What did you like about it and did you hate it with a burning passion? I'd like to know any thoughts you have. Now, if there is a second season, which supposedly I'm hearing is possibly this year, I don't think I have the entire energy to do it. Unless this one gets like a decently good like and like a view ratio or even like maybe as a subscriber goal or something like that. I'm might, you know, torch myself with it because I have nothing else better to do. But we'll have to see if this ever happens. Who knows? But as always, I hope you all stay being wonderful people. Have a great day every day. Keep being you. You know, uh, take care of yourselves because the world's crazy. And I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna go watch something good like Spider Verse, Boy in the Heron, or even Has Been Hotel again. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next episode. So take care, keep being you, and signing off. Goodbye.